Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our Tuesday lunch chat. Look what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's all done. Hi, Nydia. Um, yeah, one fireworks, fireworks in the books. Hi, Stephanie. Um, super stoked that this one's done. Got her blocked uh, over the weekend. And I'll stand up in just a second and give her a proper showing. Hi, Jen. Uh, I just, um, I don't know, I'm so in love with this sweater. And there's more exciting um, goodness to come. And now I just need to finish my original, the OG <laughs> denim blue sweater. Um, and I'll be good to go. <laughs> that and like, you know, a million other uh, whips that I've got. Mm. So much knitting and not enough time. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Heidi. Um, yes, I'm so excited. And she looks really good with my favorite orange earrings that I don't have a huge occasion to wear. I got these for tailgating um, at Oregon State Beaver Games. Go Beavs. And now that I have a duck in the family, what? How did that even happen? Um... There's probably not going to, oh, I could proudly wear them to the Civil War um, and, and go with my duck and wear all my orangeness. Yeah, so anyways, I was, this morning I was like, oh, my orange earrings, I can wear it. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Thank you, everybody. It is, um, oh my gosh. You guys, I always like Marie's sweaters. I think they, they always fit me really well. And part of that might be because I have learned how to make a sweater, sweater, a sweater fitter. I sound like um, Kate Winslet's character on <laughs> East Town, <laughs> Mayor of East Town. Um, how to make a sweater fit me better. Let's see if I can pronounce that correctly. Uh, but anyways, I just, Marie's sweaters, I love them. I like how they look on me and I like how they fit. And this is no exception. So, good Lord, I have more sweaters in my closet than I can conceivably wear. That's all right, that's all right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stand up and, and give you a little better look at my fireworks if I can. Maybe I have to go up on tippy toe. So here's my little sleeve detail. I love that they are different. That was just, you know, the different sections of the yarn that I was in. Um, pull my hair back so you guys can really see the, see the yoke detail. So we've got, I did the fireworks, of course. I mean, the baubles, of course. We talked about that um, on the video last week. And then, can I tippy toe enough to get you? There's there's my little side detail here we go i have to pull it up a little now this is quite cropped because um a cropped sweater on my short-waisted petite frame is only 10 inches from the armhole to the hem um so you know that's i know a lot shorter than most people would want to wear it but for me um oh that's weird julia um so yeah, she, sorry, she said her feed is not working on her desktop, but it's working on her phone. Um, I'm on my phone this time. I, I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I, I just feel like the video quality is so much better when I record via my phone or go, when I stream via my phone rather than the laptop. But um, anyway, did you, no, I didn't duplicate stitch. I, they're all knitted in because I feel like it's gonna be really hard to maintain accuracy and where you put the stitches unless you're very adept at duplicate stitch. Uh, but one thing I did do is I maintained it right through the ribbing, which I thought was fun. So I, um, it actually calls for the fireworks to end before you put your cuff on. And granted, I did a modification to make, <laughs> whoops, let's just tuck that right back in there. Um, I modified these to make it three quarter sleeve because my blue one will have the regular full sleeves as written, but I brought the firework down into the ribbing of the cuff because I just thought that would be fun um, to continue it. And oh my gosh, it was it was appropriate to wear this sweater that when I left the house this morning. Woo! But it's a little warm now. <laughs> Anyway, I am so glad that she's done. So um, if you guys are interested in making a two color fireworks, I have a lot of very um, important 
tips and tricks you are going to want to know. It is not just as straightforward as join another color. So I've got a um, fireworks knit along set form set up. If you got the, the newsletter yesterday, you got the link to go uh, submit your name onto that form. So you get the Zoom invite to our fireworks uh, knit along meetups. Now, if you submit your name and you um, you sign up that way, it doesn't matter if you can't make the live meetups, they'll be recorded and an email will go out with a replay link so you can watch it later and get all the important info. It also will put you on the email list to get a written tip sheet from me um, with the written out tips. So you definitely wanna go sign up on that form um, if you're interested in the hacks, tips and tricks uh, for making your fireworks to colors. Now, if you're not on our email list and you missed the newsletter yesterday, maybe send us an email to customer service um, or go on over and head to our su uh, newsletter subscription, sign up on our website and get signed up so that we can get that in, um, uh, get that out to you in a future email. Martha says, can we ask you for recommendations to go with our So Happy Jane? Oh, definitely. Yes, Martha. So if you guys are, um, if you've got your So Happy Jane yarn already for your, for your fireworks, and now you're thinking you might want to incorporate um, a contrast uh, firework color, just send us an email. We'll help you pick out some color um, that would go with whatever color you got. We're happy to do that. Um, and if you, I know Sharon was talking about maybe getting some help with colors, like at least narrowing the field, just send us an email, tell us, give us a little bit of direction. You know, it's kind of like a, a little bit more focused corn skein maybe, <laughs> but you know, give us some color direction and we can put together some combinations for you um, if it's just too overwhelming to have everything be a choice. So um, yeah, let me just scroll through the comments real quick, like, make sure I haven't missed any questions. Um, Looks pretty good. Julia, if, if I can only see two comments at a time when I'm on my phone, so if I miss something really important, um, pop it back in there in a new comment and I will try to keep watching for it. So yes, that's the rundown on the fireworks. Um, <laughs> so uh, yes, someone said very colorful wall behind me and that is also on purpose. We got 10 amazing new colors of the smooshy with cashmere from dream and color and oh my this is like a um a subscription that they came up with for yarn shops where you signed up you get the 10 colors and then every three months you get 10 new colors and i love it when dyers do this especially dyers that i know and trust to make beautiful creations it just takes all of that overwhelm <laughs> like you guys think it's hard to pick out combinations for a sweater it's hard to pick out colors to stock a shelf i'm like i, I don't know i love all of them <laughs> So I love it when they offer this this way of doing it. And so some of our new ones are um, here. This is Tiny Blue, She Walks in Beauty. This Melon Bomb color, holy smokes is this beautiful. Oh my gosh. Melon Bomb, um, Desert City Wattage, nice and bright. Pinky, so beautiful. Sonoran Magic, this one too. Oh, look at that. Um, this one, this little Celadon kind of is Spoil the Littles, and uh, Time Away, and Element 79. Oh, and over here we have Sundance. So beautiful colors, and the nice thing is, is they look really nice um, with the existing 10 colors in this line. So anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you about what you can do with it. So we talked last time I showed you the original 10 colors about how I was knitting Old Town with, you like how I just sidled her right on in here? My lady and I hanging out together. Um, I'm knitting Old Town in Leia Rose, which is this color right here on the very end. And um, Judy even bought some, um, I think it was, no, she got this uh, straw into gold right here. And she already finished her Old Town. I think she put a picture up in our Unraveled Facebook group. So if you want to go and see Judy's finished Old Town in um, that color. Yes, this is Fingering Yarn. It's a cashmere blend. And this Old Town's going to take me four skeins. And this is going to be kind of like a hip length, um, long sleeve. So 
but not bad for four skeins. But I, I put her on the mannequin today so you could really see the details because obviously I'm not done. I know, I know. But I just love the overall fit of this sweater. This is the sweater that I wear in bright yellow, like a gold that I, um, it's one of my favorites, old, old sweaters. And I've worn it a few times on lives and everyone just goes gaga. That's why I knew it was a good one to, to do again. And if you saw, uh, oh, sorry, it's next week. <laughs> Check out next week's blog post. <laughs> we'll talk about some serial knitting things. That's all I'm gonna say about that for now. Um, anyway, the, the shaping and architecture of this sweater is really lovely. So we have like a um, really interesting sleeve and shoulder shaping here. And then there's a little, um, actually a little gather that happens where you increase right here that gives really nice shape to the front. So it really hangs nice. And then also it has written in that you do an increase every so often here right outside of the lace so that this continues to lay nice and flat down the center because I don't know about you guys, but one of my biggest pet peeves is a, car a long cardigan that falls away when it gets stuck on my boobs, right? So like it comes here and then it just goes at an angle away to my waist. I hate that. And since my hips are, you know, big, <laughs> It's even worse if the sweater has a tendency to do that. Like it does it even more on me because of my hips. I love that this sweater doesn't do that because it has that built in increase that you just do one every like, I don't know, two inches or something as you work down the front. And that keeps it, it doesn't make it come in at an angle. It just makes it actually lay straight, which is really, really interesting. So then if we look at the back, my sleeves are on hold right now. This is where it's also really fun and intriguing. So what we do actually in this sweater is we cast on right down this center back right here and we work out for one shoulder and we come back and we pick up from a provisional cast on and we work across the other shoulder. And then once all of that shoulder um, and sleeve cap shaping is done, then you pick up stitches along the side edge of that right there. And you do another little gather right here, which makes for a really flattering, nice fitting back. So it's just beautifully, beautifully written this pattern. And the collar fits really, really well. Um, so if you were looking for inspiration, look no further than Miss Old Town by Carol Sunday. So um, I am actually gonna do another sweater in this yarn because I can't not. <laughs> I am powerless to not cast on another sweater in this yarn. So I am doing Marie's Bentley cardigan from Olive Knits. Uh, that's what I mean by Marie. And I'm doing it in this color. Mm, yum, right? So this is, uh, Bentley is a cute little, just a little, you know, plain little cardigan. It's got the little wildflower knot detail on the on the front. And then it's got a three quarter sleeve with a little uh, keyhole. And you put a tiny little button right there on the sleeve. It's just perfect. It's the perfect sweater to wear like over a sleeveless sundress, um, especially in Oregon when you need something in the mornings and the evenings. Uh, so there's lots of great options. This yarn would also, <laughs> would also be incredible for the two color striped cardigan whose name just went out of my brain. It's the Olive Knit sweater that, oh gosh, someone will come up with it. Uh, two colors. I think it might have like a little slight V-neck shaping. Can't remember, Jill's made it. Um, ugh, well, anyways, just basically go and look at all the Olive Knit's fingering patterns and you could you could do any, um, any in this gorgeous yarn. Uh, so, Yes, that's the dream and color smooshy. Belize, thank you, Julia. Jill, I knew you would get the names. Oh, and Apogean is another another good one that would work. Right, two colors. Now, Apogean's a pullover, I believe. Yeah, um, yum. Okay, I actually have another delicious fingering I wanna show you guys, but it's gonna require me moving. So get ready, we're about to travel. Do, do, do. And now I'm gonna sit on the floor. If you guys don't hear from me by Friday, it's because I couldn't get up off the floor. <laughs> Take my shoes off. All right. Whoa, look at that. Ooh la la. Oh, I should have moved that little sample that's in the way there. We also got restocked on 
Madeline Tosh Marina Light, and Unicorn Tails. Mm. Look at those beauties. So Jill and Julia both had a run for their money on Friday um, and Saturday trying to get all of this put away. It was a big order. Um, we also got restocked on the wool cotton for those of you who are looking for wool cotton colors that we were already sold out of. Yes, I got the tails hung up. Um, but yes, gorgeous, gorgeous new colors of Merino Light. Oh my goodness. Get myself out of the way. Gorgeous, gorgeous new colors. So again, it's another beautiful fingering and it would work for um, any of those sweaters that we just talked about, including the Old Town, the one I've got on the needles, and Bentley, and um, Belize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can keep names straight. I can. Um, the other thing is the, the tails. I meant to grab the sample and uh, I don't. It's not nearby. But um, the tails are really fun for Lefty. And I know that that one's been around for a long time. That's the Martina Bem shawl that has like almost like a little leaf detail along the edge. And you use um, one main color, like a solid, and then you use these tails for your um, little leaf contrasts. And it is so, so much fun to do and put together different combinations of unicorn tails for Lefty. Um, we also do have this. Oh, she's reaching. This is Unicorn Parallelogram by Stephen West. And I did this years ago. This is a really fun, mindless kind of knit. Um, that takes 20 unicorn tails and you make these little offset parallelograms that uh, you use one whole tail for each one. So you put together a combination of 20 and it is so, it's like this perfect mix of kind of like mindless but entertaining. The entertaining part is like, oh look, I just finished another um, parallelogram and I get to join a new one. And the mindless part is it's garter with a very basic increase decrease thing that makes the um, shapes go on the bias. So I remember, well, I don't remember exactly. I remember at the time that I made this sample, I really just needed mindless, not overly complicated. There was a lot going on in our life at that time. And I don't even remember what it was because it was, it's been around a while that sample has. Uh, anyways, but it fit the bill. It was the perfect project for, um, for that. Lefty is by Martina Bem, um, and it is spelled L-E-F-T-I-E. -E. So if you're looking for that one. Um, but yeah, our, where is our Lefty? I was wondering if I could get it without too much effort. I have no idea where it's at. Jill is so good at making the shop look pretty that um, she keeps me on my toes. <laughs> Anyways. Maybe I'll grow, I'll find it by Friday and show you on Friday. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you guys, I think that that is enough squishy goodness for one day, just at least, just or at least for the these fifteen minutes or so. And I hope you enjoyed seeing my fireworks. Um, I am enjoying wearing it absolutely. And so um, I will see you guys on Friday. Sound good? Make sure that you're on the uh, newsletter list so that you get the two-color uh, Zoom sign-up form. So, all right, everyone. I hope you have a lovely Tuesday, and we'll see you later this week.